So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And today we have something very exciting. We're going to be installing OMV 5.05, I think it is, which is the first unofficial, official, final version of OMV 5. And so there's lots of changes under the hood, but most of those we can't see. And so we'll just be concentrating on installing it and showing you the different things that have changed that we can see. And one of those is the Docker plugin has changed. It has gone from uh, the customized Docker plugin to Portainer. And I have done a video about Portainer and I'll leave a link down in the description. And for this video, I'm gonna be leaving lots of links down in the description for everything that you need to do the install today. So please look in the description for anything you like. And then if you have any questions about the installation or you're having any problems, head over to the Open Media Vault forums and there'll be lots of helpful people there to help you uh, answer your questions. And if you like this video today, make sure you like and if you haven't already subscribed and here we go now. And a special thank you to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. And if you haven't already, take a look in the description and you can find out about sponsoring this channel too. Okay, so let's get started on installing Open Media Vault 5. So before we actually download anything, so the first thing you're going to need is a USB drive. And this is one I like, a SanDisk 16 gigabytes, very cheap, $4.99. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Next, you're going to need to download Bella Anna Etcher and install that. This will write the OS image to the USB drive for us. So finally, we're going to go to openmediavault.org and we're going to go to the download section. And then we're going to click on here under the ISO section. And that will take us to SourceForge where then we can click on the current version of Open Media Vault, which right now is 5.05. .05. Click on the top one for AMD 64 or 64-bit machines that use AMD or Intel chips. Once that's downloaded, open Etcher, select image, click on Open Media Vault and open, and then click Flash, and then it will flash the USB drive. Once that's done, click close, pull out your USB drive, and then install it on your machine and turn it on. So once that starts, we're going to tab through the various menus here. So click on your language, your country, your language. Name your server and choose a domain name if you need to. Set up a root password. And write this down because you will need this. Type that in twice and then hit continue. Choose your time zone. And then hit continue to pick your storage device. And I'm going to hit continue. Then that will format and start in installing the system. And this will take a while, so I'm going to speed this up. And then hit your country for your mirror and pick your mirror. Uh, if you have a proxy, hit that or put that here. Now it's installing the bootloader. And then once you get to this, you need to pull out your USB drive and then hit enter and it will reboot. Uh, so once you get to this screen, you can do a couple different things. So I actually suggest logging in as roots and then your password that you just put in and then you can do app updates so apt and then updates updat and then hit enter and that will update your packages for your server and then apt apt upgrade and then hit enter and then if there's any packages to upgrade, hit yes or Y, and then enter. So that will get most of the most recent packages before you actually log in the first time. And this will, again, take a few minutes. 
Next, click OK. And so you can still see it on the screen. So we're going to type omb config the badman populate. Then hit Enter. And then finally, we're going to type in IP and ADDR. And that will give us our IP address. So my IP address is 192.168.8.199. So now we can switch over to the web browser. And so once we go to our web address, and there is another way you can do this. You can actually log into your router and then find your IP address that way also. Uh, for the username and password, the first time you log in is admin. And the password is Open Media Vault. And if you don't know how to spell it or you have trouble spelling it, you can just hit the I and you can look at your password. Then hit Login. We're going to start going down this list of different things and we'll show you what those are. First, in general settings, we want to change logout from five minutes to all day. And so that way you won't log in or log out automatically out of Open Media Vault every five minutes. Then click Save. And then apply and yes. Next, we're going to go to web admin password. And so our current password is Open Media Vault. And so we're going to change that to something more secure that not everybody knows. And then we're going to click Save. And so our new password is saved. Next, we'll go down to date and time. And just make sure our time zone is correct, our date is correct, and our time is correct. And for me, those are all good. And so for network, we're not going to do anything because we're going to keep it on the local network. Notifications are if you want your server to send you notifications of different things happening on your computer. Power management. So on this, you can change the power button. So either shut down or standby or nothing. I prefer shut down. Then click save and apply and yes. So for scheduled jobs, that's where we can do things like reboots, shut down, or put the computer in standby. And we can do that hour, day, month, day of the week, uh, so on and so forth. Monitoring is enabled uh, by default. So certificates are where you add your SSH or SSL uh, certificates. Schedule jobs is how you add Chrome jobs. And so again, it's very similar looking to the shutdown and suspend. And uh, right here is where you add the commands. Update manager are, is where you update your server and you can click check and it will check for you. Plugins are where you add in different plugins by default, and we'll come back to this in a few minutes. So next we're going to click on disk, and so here we have two disks. So the first disk is our hard disk where we have put our system on. The second one, SB2, we're going to wipe, and yes, and we're going to do that quick. Close that. And if you want to add uh, smart settings, you just click Enable and then Save, Apply, and Yes. And then you can adjust things, different things here. And here you can enable it for your different devices. So how you would do that is you, you highlight it, and then you click Edit, and then Activate Smart Monitoring, and then click Save. And so now it's enabled for that disk. After we click Apply and Yes. And then Schedule Tests is where we can add tests for those disks. Again, we would pick a device and pick what kind of test we want and what hour, day, and of the week or month we want to do. So RAID is where you can add in several different disks and put it in a RAID array. And how you would do that is click Create. And in order to do this, you need more than one disk. So I only have one disk available. So your OS disk does not count towards RAID. 
And so what you would do is click a device or click all your devices and then pick your type of RAID that you want to do. And then click create and that can take a few hours depending on how big your devices are. Alternatively, you can use other systems to back up your device. Uh, Open Media Vault supports all the different RAID-like systems to back up your uh, data. Next, we're going to go to File System, and we're going to click Create, and select a device. And then we're going to pick our second hard disk there, and we're going to name that Mega. And you can, again, pick your file system here. We're just going to leave it at extension floor for and click, click OK. And yes. And now that wipes that disk and creates a partition. Once that's done, click close. And now we have to highlight that. It turns yellow, and we're going to click mount. And then uh, apply, and yes. And now we have a disk available for all our data. Next, we're going to go under Access Rights. We're going to click on User. And we're going to add a user. Click Add. And then add uh, whatever username you would like. So I'll just call mine User1. And then you need to put in an email address. And then a password. And then you can click Save, but you probably want to pick out some groups. Then we're going to click that, or then we're going to scroll down to the S's. So you have a couple different choices here. You can make this user root if this is going to be your uh, root or admin. Uh, here we're going to use it for Samba shares, and we're going to do SSH, and we're going to give this user sudo access. So we're do that, and then we're going to click Save, and uh, click Apply, and Yes, to save those settings. Next, we're going to create some shared folders. And so these folders are basically, these are not Samba shares, but they are shares on the server to be used by the server. So first, we're going to click Add, and so we're going to pick uh, name a few here. The first one is going to be called Docker. And click our hard drive. And so here we have a couple of different um, options. And I just made a whole video about uh, shares. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. But for right now, we're going to create everyone read writes. And this will make it so that Everyone will have access to the share, and then click Save. Then we're going to click Apply, and yes. And we're going to create two more shares. So first is going to be Downloads. And pick a device. And we're going to change that to Everyone Read Write, and then click Save. And Apply, and yes. Next, we're going to add in one more, and we're going to call that Media. And then we're going to pick a device, and again, everyone read right, and then click Save, Apply, and Yes. Next, we're going to go down to SMB SIFS, which is over here on the left. We're going to click on that. And so this will make it so that we can share files over our network. And so make sure you have your work group correct. And then enable this. And then click Save. And Apply. And yes. Now we're going to click on Shares. And we're going to add shares. So we're going to select our folders. The first one is going to be Docker. And we're going to make Guests Allowed. And then enable Permission Inheritance. And then click Save. And then apply and yes. And then add another folder. And we're going to call this downloads. And guess allowed. And enable permission inheritance and click save. 
apply and yes and we're going to add in one more and that one is our media folder and guests allowed and enable permission inheritance and click save and apply and yes next we're going to scroll up on the left and go to plugins and so here you can see there's an upload button so what we're going to do is op upload the open media vault extras and so we're going to go to omv.extras.org we're going to go over to guides click on that we're going to scroll down so what we're going to do is use this command to install open media vault extras into omv5 uh, for that we'll need putty and so putty is a telnet client and so we have to download it and so here's the latest version so click on that and then uh, download putty for the windows installer right here 64-bit if you so once you've installed putty you need to open that and then here where it says host name you need to put the ip address of your server and that's up here in the web browser and then click open and for you the first time you run it you'll need to click yes or confirm and then log in as root and then your server password hit enter now we're going to go over to our guides we're going to copy our bash command and then we're going to right click and that will copy the command to putty and then hit enter and once that's done you can close that window and click OK and we're going to go back over to open media vaults we're going to reload the page and click reload and now over here on the left you can see there's the OMV extras we can click on that so on the open media vault extras page we're going to do two things we're going to enable the extras repo and we're going to change the docker storage location and so why we're doing this is it will store it on your os drive so if you have either a usb drive or a sd card this will rapidly fill up your card or your drive uh, we're going to change it to our data drive where we have lots of room and if you remember earlier in our shared folders we created a folder named docker and so we're going to save that uh, all our dockers there and then we're going to click save so next we're going to click on install docker and so here we have two choices we sort of already made it for you because we already click save install portainer which is uh, one version of docker that's the most widely used docker sort of facilitator the other one is cockpit which is simpler but on the other hand is more limited so we're going to just stick with portainer and we're going to use that for all the videos from now on so we're going to click on install docker and once that's done click close and next we'll click on open portainer so now we're at the portainer ui and so we the first thing we need to do is set a password once you've done that click create user and then click on local and connect and so that will take you to the portainer interface and then click on the blue whale there and we're into the docker dashboard and I have another video about portainer but I'm going to be updating that as people will start be to use this more often that that is the basics of open media vault and you should be ready to go on omv5 this is using omv5 almost beta version almost regular version so more than likely it will stay the same as it is now and if you have any questions head over to the open media vault forums otherwise you have a great day and bye bye <laughs>